what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. Welcome to Christmas Eve. Tomorrow, that means tomorrow's Christmas because today's Christmas Eve. So, first things first, I know you guys are all thinking it's driving you crazy. Dude, your hat doesn't match. Oh, I know it's 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 making me batty in my head, but I didn't want to go upstairs and get another hat, and this is what was next to me. So I put it on. Oh, I hate. I hate that kind of thing. I hate not mad. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry freaking Christmas. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, well, then not to you. Um, so, what do we have today? You already know because it's in the title. You already know, so it's in the title. The Mission 4. Hey, wait, that's not the Mission 4. Well, it is the Mission 4, but it's not the Mission 4. Let's Let's redo. Let's redo. We'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. We'll get... Oh, that's my D-Bad Mission 4. So, ooh, man alive. Woo-wee, guys. Oh, so we are going to get into some specs and all that. And we're going to take it out today because this isn't a preview video anymore. No siree, Bob. Hi, Bob. Um, this is the get it out and bang it video. So... Rambo, Rambo 4, one of the greatest movies, not just greatest Rambo movies, one of the greatest movies ever freaking made. Rambo 4 was phenomenal. So we get this guy, Rambo, who's living in the jungle, all right? Deadly, nasty jungle full of snakes that are trying to kill you and bugs that are trying to kill you and Burmese people that are trying to kill you. All kinds of stuff. And for some reason, for some reason, John Rambo's living there. And he doesn't own a knife. I don't... See, here's where the only hole in the whole story in that movie is. Is he had to forge a knife to use to go be the boatman. Um, in my opinion, he would have already had a knife. Which means it wouldn't have had to be a last second knife. And he wouldn't have had to just grab a piece of steel and bang it into a rectangle. No. Now this one is a little different than Gil Hibben's original design for the movie. And I have to say, Gil Hibben did a great job. He did a great job. But not just in that in that one. Um, this is one of my favorite Gil Hibben works. Um, he, uh, he did some designs for the knife that were turned down because they were too nice. They were just too nice. Stallone wanted something that looks like he could have made it in the jungle. And so that's what Gil had to give him after he came out with these really beautiful designs with some nice grinds and some fullers and different things in there and some uh, blade decorations. But uh, but Stallone was like, no, 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 I need something plain. I need something that looks like I just hammered on it because for some reason I don't have a knife. Okay, so he would have had a knife already done. But this is the shape and the style of Gil Hibben's movie knife. This one, um, rather than Gil Hibben's knife, I went with this one because this is super freaking rare. This is super freaking rare. And as a matter of fact, I'm, uh, as far as I like people that I know, I'm the only one I know that has the chrome, fully chrome um, flagship autograph series john rambo um rambo four knife now the handle is was more like gill's handle which was very very plain and raw it's like two pieces of stick and it had some leather wrapping um and i it just they they don't work for me so i had to I had to make it because I like to use it. And obviously, you can see, even though it's super rare, it's got scratches on it and everything, because I like to use it. It's fun. Um, but it's a really cool blade. It's a cool design. This one's pretty much almost exactly the spec as Gil Hibbins. I believe Gil Hibbins may have been a quarter inch thick, I think. And um, I think. I'm not 100% sure. And he used, I believe, 440C, where this one is not. Um, but... This is what he designed. It was all black and dimpled from, it's supposed to have like hammer marks and this and that. And I thought, you know what, it, it's kind of cool. It is, it's kind of cool. But I wanted something different. I didn't want the the soiree at the end of there or that beautiful flipping tip. Um, and 
I definitely wanted to improve a grip because here's my thinking. If John J. Rambo had to use something for battle and he had to go to war with it, he wouldn't choose something where if he hits, his hand could slide off and cut his fingers. Not Gil Hibbins. Um, you know, people, people, I've heard people knock Gil Hibbins' design all over the place, but Gil Hibbins' original design was actually much nicer than the movie one, but it's because it's what Stallone wanted, of course. So, not knocking Gil on this one because it's not his fault, but this, even on Gil's knife, it's the same thing. It's, there's no guard, there's no, you know, happiness for a downward swat. This is a straight up, you know, chopper. And, but, you know, it's supposed to be used as a stab or two in the movie because you've seen it. Um, no. So the design, um, the design had flaws and it had failures. So I said, well, let's say Rambo didn't just have to make his knife in, in a spur to moment type thing. Let, let's say he had a little bit of time, but he wanted this style. He loved this style, which is great. It's a great style. But I think what he would have done is... Um, I, I don't know. I, for some reason, this grind just it, that full flat, it does nothing for the knife. It's, I don't know. I mean, you can see it's just a straight boop, boop. And it, it's not what the blade should be, especially, especially in that movie, because he would have been sharpening it with a spinning stone, which means he would have had a hollow grind through most of this blade. <sighs> he would have had a hollow grind. So the grind doesn't match the tools, right? So let's go piece by piece. Let's look at some of the differences here. All right. First, you're going to notice the blade length is slightly different. Um, my blade length is 12 inches. Uh, this one, I don't know what it is, maybe 14, 13, somewhere in there. Um, I completely didn't measure. Uh, the Ricasso is just about the same size. And where Gil Hibben went with a triangular cut, I wanted to go with a triangular cut, and that's why this is triangular and not round. And a lot of people say, well, why wouldn't you put a choil there? Because the Rambo knife had a triangular cut, and I wanted to pay homage to that knife. So that's why we have a triangular cut, and I think it looks kind of boss. Um, also, this one is a quarter inch thick, where this one, and it's not a Gil Hidden Blade, remember that, but this one is clearly not as thick, right? Still pretty thick, but it's not as thick. Um, 12 inches, it's 5160 steel. This stuff isn't going anywhere. This is awesome. Quarter inch thick, two and a half inches at the widest point. Um, it's got a five and a quarter inch full tang grip with a lanyard hole. Um, black micarta scales, right? Uh, let's see, you can see the texture in there. I don't know. I can, I got, I'm in the way, so I can't really see it. Um, yeah, you could see it. So that's black micarta scales. Um, and the sheath, the sheath is no joke on my knife. Um, so you'll see that that style had, it was like this and this wasn't sewn in. It was actually cut shorter and it was open. So you could see the tip coming through, but it was pretty much a uh, a plain looking sheath where my guys at the Kukri house made one nasty sweet machete style sheath with the proper leg tie. I love how they make their leg ties. Look at the rivets on this guy. This is a nasty sheath. This thing is just awesome. If I wanted to wear it cross strap across my body, I have the hook here and I have a hook here so I could actually do that. This sheath Oh, man. And it's hand-formed for the blade, so it fits it perfectly. This sheath was so well done. This is one of my new favorite sheaths. I love this sheath. They worked the snot out of this thing, and it is awesome. Great job, Kukri House. Great job, Kukri House. So, the Kukri House, of course, that because that's who makes my design. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Do you see... I don't know if you can, because lighting and all that. But I don't know if you could see it, the the shape. It's kind of like it goes from a flat angle, and then it goes in, and then it hits a point right here, and then it goes boom. So what you see here is a huge hollow grind whoosh, all the way through, except here the end is flat. So you get that really sweet 
there you go. You get that sweet freaking taper, boom, boom. And what's going to happen here is because of my grind angles and what I wanted to get out of this knife, and the Cougar House just nails it. I, I send them the design and they just nail it. Um, it's hollow here, and you can see that the grind starts here, but it doesn't end there. It goes all the way to the tip, right? All the way to the end. And that makes it wonderful when it comes to balance because now we're talking about a big hefty blade, right? You're talking about a quarter inches thick of 5160. Um, the hollow grind pulls the weight all the way through the blade. The grind itself takes the weight distribution and puts the big part of the weight right here, right in the center of the blade. That's going to give you a banging hard shot. I mean, a banging hard shot where the weight off the tip, why it cut the, why the grind comes all the way up this way, makes it lighter here, makes it faster there. Um, what, what'd you say? That's genius. I know. Thanks. Um, so it's just, it works out in every angle. Now the Micarta grips you're going to need a full grip. You know what I mean? And if you had time, if you're sitting there and you're like, oh, you know, I'm going to make myself a knife. Well, if you wanted this style of knife, which is dope, um, what you're going to do is give yourself a handle. And because we go from handle to blade, you're going to put on some kind of guard. So I went with a minimalist guard where it's just awesome it's on there it sits right it's perfect it's beautiful and these guards don't go anywhere the kukri house i don't know i don't know how they weld these things on there but everything is old school and that's the that's the whole mystique you know what i mean people go to the kukri house because if you order 10 of the same knife 10 knives might be an eighth difference in size somewhere because they're hand forged. Somebody gets a coal fire going and they stick a bunch of steel in there. And then they take hammers and they bang them into shape. This isn't where like you see the big box stores where they have a big sheet of steel and they stick it in a machine and then the water jet goes and cuts 50 knives in an hour. You know what I mean? And then they get it out and they put it on the machine and it goes and it grinds all. No, this is hand ground. This is somebody took their hands and took the the sanding, um, the sand uh, belt or grinder, and they just woo, woo, over and over again by eye. There's no jig involved. These guys are just awesome. And that's the mystique. Are you going to find imperfections? Absolutely. And it's the imperfections that make people go back to them because it shows that Okay, I mean, there's not too many imperfections in this knife, I'll tell you that. But it shows that this thing was made by hand, right? So somebody put their care into it. And if I went and got this from one of the big box stores and and they made this knife, what they would have done is they would have water jetted it out, and which they press a button and the, and the machine does all the work. And then they would have taken that water jetted steel and they would have put it into a jig and they would have made all the grinds happen that way. And literally with material with material and time the the knife probably would have cost them maybe 40 bucks to make maybe 40 dollars to make if that's it but like my partner joe joe m joe will make a knife and he'll put between one and 300 hours into every knife he makes that he does his hollow handle stuff because he hand tools everything. He hand cuts out the steel. He hand is, and that's why he sells knives for, you know, $3,000 because they are handmade. The Kukri House is offering you a handmade knife that takes hours to make. Not an hour, not an hour on a machine. It takes hours. It takes days, days. It could take them a month to make a blade because they're doing everything by hand. And that is why people want these knives. All right, so you guys have hung around now for 15 minutes almost. Let's go outside. Woo wee. All right, all right. So we're out here in the frozen tundra. <laughs> this thing, if I throw it hard enough, I'm pretty sure it'll split that log. Oh, here's the thing we were just talking about. If you go to the big box stores who water jet out their knives, a knife like this might cost you 250 bucks. A knife like this from like a cold steel, they would have up there in the $300 range, easy. And uh, and that's for 
$50 or less worth of materials and an hour's worth of time where this one is hours and they are under 200 bucks. Yeah, I'll take that all day long. Let's do a couple of four foot drops. We'll see how this big boy hits. It's just a thud. Oh man, that is a lot of knife. That is a lot of knife. That is some crazy, crazy good steel. Oh, look at how much that buried. Oh, oh. You can see the line right there. It buried that much on that downward throw. And the reason is because it's a hollow grind right there and the tip was the tip starts from there. Now you're gonna get some good bite. So now, a lot of the stuff we'd like to do over here, cutting stuff we can't do because everything's buried in the snow. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bang on it. We are going to bang on it. So we're gonna take it over here and we're just gonna swat. We're gonna swat stuff and uh, have some fun. Let's see what we can't chop up. Man, I hate this weather. I do, I do. All right, so let's start with some uh, some branches. And we'll just take those apart. I'm pretty sure you guys are in there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love the way this feels. All right, so <laughs> right off the bat, what I can tell you, wow, it swings like crazy. And I'm so glad I contoured this handle rather than leaving it flat like the movie knife because Wow, that's, that's necessary. That is necessary. All right. So let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see. Gosh, this thing is a beast. Woo wee. I don't know if y'all saw that. Oh man, look at those. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, baby. Look at that. Oh, man. Now let's go through it. Ba boom. Holy crap. So, this thing is pretty uh it's pretty awesome as far as like a movie style knife and that's what this is. It's a movie replica without replicating the movie knife. It's it's its own knife, but you know, um, it's off of it's off of a knife that's already been done, right? But uh, holy crap, this one is so much better than the movie knife. <laughs> oh, look at that devastating hit! Ugh. That is just so freaking perb. What's up? The Kukri House in Nepal. Look at the weight shift and balance on this knife. Boom, boom. Oh my gosh, this thing is, this thing is awesome. This thing is, I wish, I wish you guys could feel the way this feels in my hand. Like, I can't, I can't give you, like, what it feels like. I can't, I can't show you. I can tell you over and over again. But holy crap, until you put this thing in your hand, that's when you're going to know. I mean, wow, it's a beast. All right, we got that in there. Let's take a couple of chops on the big, on the big log. Wow! So, right away, I mean, all that happened. How many of you are out there with your Rambo four knives, chopping down trees and chopping up logs? Wow, I just hit it, I miss hit a few with just the tip. And look at the lacerations. I was aiming here, but I was coming down with the tip here. Wow, what, look at this. I'm gonna try to go crossway to get what I just came through. Look at that, look at that. Not even, I'm not even swinging. Just taking off what I just hit accidentally. And it's just cruising right through. Let's try right-handed. See if we can swing with our offhand on this. Oh my gosh. Wow. 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 This thing's awesome. It's just 
beating the snot out of this tree. Holy Moses! I mean, what? <laughs> this thing is fun, man. Oh. Oh. Look at this. Look at this. I'm going to just hold it right here. I'm going to show you just by tapping. Look at the devastation. Because the weight in the center of the blade, and you'll see where I'm hitting, right? I'm hitting here because that's where the weight is. I don't even have to hit at the tip. Normally when you're chopping, you want momentum through your swing. So you hit with the end of the blade, right? And that's where a chopper gets all its chop action. This blade, because of the grind and because of the design, <laughs> um, because of the design, you can literally hit and get devastating chops where your hand is, which means you're basically holding like a three inch knife and you're still, look at this, look at this. See where I'm hitting? And you're still absolutely devastating what you're aiming at. That right there is some serious, serious power midway through the knife. So what about the end? <laughs> well, of course, because that's the end. So you could chop like nut with that. Um, it's just awesome. This thing is crazy, crazy cool. I mean, crazy cool this thing is. Wow. Wow. I'm really, really happy that somewhere in my head I thought to myself, you know what we need to do is we need to remake the Rambo collection, but remake it in a way that if... If Stallone were to see them or grab them or feel them, he would have said, okay, yeah, I should have went with you. Um, because that's the goal. I want to do the Rambo knives, not the way they were, but the way they should be. This, this is Rambo how it should be. Oh my gosh. This, <laughs> this is a devastating, chopping power hacking nasty song going radial song out this is just phenomenal freaking phenomenal um the kukri house is they're just the greatest at what they do you know what i mean i send them something they send it back looking like this oh ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. hey imagine that it's christmas um so i mean this is a win. This is a win. This isn't a uh, bushcraft knife, obviously, so I don't need to go out there and do a bunch of bushcrafty stuff. Um, but this is a serious, serious banging blade, and it seriously bangs. This is awesome. So if you guys, uh, if you guys are willing to wait until they put it online, which I'm pretty sure you are, once this video is done, they will. Uh, Whew. They will get it going. Man. Man, this is the raw black is, is awesome. I love how they do that. Not painted black, raw black. Raw, nasty black. Look at that. Like it just came out from your car. Like somebody just ripped a leaf spring off a pickup truck and did it. This is not polished. It's not chrome. It's not shiny. It's raw. Raw nastiness oh my gosh if you never thought you needed a gigantic nasty hacking knife well you thought wrong i'm telling you right now you thought wrong um i'm not thinking any less of you yeah i am um if you didn't think you needed one but you definitely you need one of these i mean even if you're just a rambo knife collector and you want to put it with your rambo knife collection and say man what could have been this is going to be one of those one of those Rambo collecting style knives. Oh, so again, Kukri House, uh, K-H-U-K-U-R-I House um, in Nepal. Go to their website um, and you can find all my D-Bad designs there. This one will be coming up soon. And great news after Christmas, which is two days or tomorrow, <laughs> two days. Um, tomorrow's Christmas. 
after Christmas, they are going to start working on the D-Bad. This is the D-Bad Mission 4, the D-Bad Mission 3. So everybody knows what that third Rambo knife is. Whew. Everybody knows it's got a big slit cut out in the middle of it. Ugh. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing any of that. We are making a full tang masterpiece and the Kukri house is gonna get started on that very soon. And um, can't wait for that to be done. It's just gonna be another piece of the Rambo puzzle. This thing is just insane. <laughs> so, um, so that's it. I'm gonna go and enjoy a very, very Christmas. Happy poopy poo. Um, and uh, we, you know what we did today is we rented out a movie theater and we're gonna watch Elf. There's gonna be 20 of us in this theater. It's all ours. We got a whole theater. Um, so we think that's kind of cool. Um, that's how we're spending Christmas Eve. Um, the, like, the balance in this knife is freaking awesome. Awesome. Whole. Lee mackerel. So, I'm leaving y'all with that. Meow, look at that. Meow, banging away at that frozen tree. Meow, that thing is beautiful, man. That thing is beautiful. Whew, wow. I'm Donnie B all day. Merry Christmas, everybody.